Hello people, in this video we want to look at anemia in pregnancy, a very important topic for you in obstetrics. Okay, so basically what is anemia? You should know that the hemoglobin will be less, that you already know. How much less? Less than 11, uh, 11 gram per deciliter, okay, or 11 gram percentage you can say. So remember how much, what is the value guys? 11, 11, if it is less than 11 only, it will be called as anemia. What should be less? Hemoglobin. Why is all this important? Why should you know about this? Because you can see your red blood cell that's in your blood, you have a red blood cell that is an RBC. In that what you have is a, you have hemoglobin. Hemoglobin will carry oxygen, right? So this hemoglobin is made out of iron, etc. And proteins, etc. So basically you need this for carrying oxygen. So if you have less hemoglobin, it will mean that you can carry less oxygen, right? So how is it going people? Now let us continue, okay? So basically, uh, what are the complications of anemia and pregnancy? First, you should understand. If you understand this, then only you will focus on this chapter, right? Otherwise, you will not at all bother about this chapter. Okay. So what happens during pregnancy? If person has less oxygen carrying capacity, so uh, they can have more uh, chances of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is what? Hypertension in pregnancy, which can further lead to eclampsia, which is seizures. Very good. So they are more prone to infection. So basically, you cannot, they cannot fight infection very well. And infection can again lead to anemia. And that anemia leads to infection. So this is kind of a loop, isn't it? So this anemia infection becomes a loop. Are you focusing, guys? All this is during pregnancy when the person is carrying. They can go into heart failure. Preterm labor. Why will they go into heart failure? Because the heart is getting less oxygen, can you say? Preterm labor, they can go into. See, the thing is, they will have a very small baby. Because baby is also getting less uh, of uh, nutrients, you can say. So basically, they can also go into preterm labor. Now, what happens during labor? In labor, what can happen? The baby is small. They have written this small baby. And the labor is short because of small baby and multiparity. See, that is why they say you should space the children, right? That is also one of the causes of anemia. You cannot have children back to back. You have one child and then one more child. Probably they used to do that before. But anyways, okay. Then coming to postpartum hemorrhage, this is the most important thing guys, focus here. Postpartum hemorrhage is the real threat, okay. In fact, you are seeing here that these people will bleed more. Imagine they have anemia, they have less uh, hemoglobin in the blood and they lose more blood also, right. So this becomes a real threat in these people. They can go into cardiac failure because obviously what is happening, the heart is already having hypoxia, it is not able to uh, pump enough, right? It's not able to work efficiently. And now what happens The uh, in the labor, the uterus contracts. When the uterus contracts, a lot of blood comes back to the heart, right? So let me put it like this. It comes back to the right side. So a lot of blood comes back to the heart, right? Uh, during labor because the uterus is contracting. So what happens is this heart will have to work more because of this increased you know cardiac output accelerated cardiac output so the person can go into cardiac failure focus guys then the fourth point they're telling here is shock even a minor you know uh, uh, bleed etc traumatic bleed etc they may go into shock minor hypoxia during anesthesia which may be fatal so did you get it guys what are we talking about we're talking about the complications of anemia in Pregnancy we finished, then we finish during labor, then we will go to pure perium and uh, for the baby what will happen, all that we will look at. But first of all in pregnancy, what did you see? More chances of preeclampsia, preterm labor, then she can have cardiac failure here also. And then she can have, um, which is the point that I forgot, infection. Infection, uh, anemia, infection, that kind of a loop. Okay, during labor, what did you see? Small baby, postpartum hemorrhage is a real threat. This you have to write cardiac failure and shock. Don't forget shock. Okay. Now we are continuing the complications of pregnancy, uh, anemia in pregnancy. We are looking at uh, what else are the complications. So we will look at the pure perium. What will happen? There is increased chances of sepsis. Again, infection, right? Subinvolution. Are we talking about the uterus here? Yes, the uterus does not return to its normal size. Okay. Uterus does not return to normal size, is it? So that is a medical condition uh, of, um, that is called a subinvolution. Poor lactation. So she will not feed the, she will not be able to give the baby enough nutrients. Poor lactation. 
puperial venous thrombosis so this is again looking scary to me venous thrombosis and the pulmonary embolism obviously once you say thrombosis the next thing you will write will be pulmonary embolism okay so she can go into sepsis same infection you can write everywhere then um, uh, nutrition wise you can write for the baby then thrombosis and pulmonary embolism poor lactation okay then coming to risk periods when is the patient uh, you know having more risk how is it going people what are we looking at we are looking at the complications of uh, anemia in pregnancy okay we are looking at the risk periods basically the patient may even die suddenly when you know at about 30 to 32 weeks of pregnancy she may die suddenly now this is looking very scary to me during labor there can be death may even die suddenly okay immediately do you are following the delivery she can die any time in the puerperium especially 7 to 10 days following delivery due to cardiac failure or pulmonary embolism she can die she can die 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 that's what we are saying guys um so just remember this when 30 to 32 weeks um, then labor just after delivery or in the puerperium for 7 to 10 days okay then what are the effects on the baby let us look at the effects on the baby give me a pink for a baby please yes so basically effects on the baby amount of iron transferred to the fetus is unaffected so baby will suck out everything that it can looks like from the mother okay so baby is very smart how much ever it wants it will take mother only it will not leave any iron for the mother looks like amount of iron transferred to the fetus is unaffected even if the mother is having iron deficiency anemia so the neonate does not suffer from anemia at birth there is an increased incidence of low birth weight okay there will be a low birth weight we already told you this small baby then intrauterine death can happen because of anoxia so anoxemia because of uh, less oxygen right or actually anoxemia means no oxygen in the blood so severe anoxemia can lead to intrauterine death of the baby okay so increased perinatal loss so the baby can die also so did you understand the complications of pregnancy guys that is why we are focusing on this topic probably uh, in obstetrics okay uh, as an important question for mbbs students now classification of anemia and pregnancy if you just said it is um, uh, anemia and it is less than 11 g per cent uh, hemoglobin it's not the end of the world guys you still have to say the classification there are so many types of anemias as usual so this is the classification of anemia and pregnancy physiological anemia will in pregnancy we'll come to this there is pathological where we told you that there can be hemorrhage hemorrhage basically can be acute or chronic so basically this is not the most uh, common one looks like but anyways remember why will they have chronic bleeding because of hookworm infestation or some piles etc okay that is hemorrhaging now let us come to what is like the production production is less why can the production of rbcs be less because see you need for production of rbc you need uh, erythropoietin right erythropoietin comes from kidney so either there is a chronic renal disease you can say or uh, you can say there is a bone marrow insufficiency because bone marrow makes the uh, blood isn't it blood cells so the thing is bone marrow insufficiency can be there or these people can have some leukemia lymphoma some neoplasm they have okay or now that everything is fine either this person didn't eat properly they have some nutritional anemia <clears throat> right so uh, basically they have iron deficiency or folic acid deficiency or vitamin b12 deficiency or protein deficiency or intrinsic factor deficiency which is again leading to vitamin b12 deficiency so basically you can put it as deficiency anemia or they have some hereditary conditions where they cannot synthesize something properly at all right like um, thalassemia where they cannot make the alpha chain or the beta chain of the hemoglobin prop um, alpha chain or hem beta chain they cannot make properly or sickle cell hemo hemoglobinopathies where there is some mutation right again again the beta chain will get affected so uh, there are some problems in the production you understood right some problem with the production part now let us go to the third type where you want to say that there is some destruction happening who will destroy these rbcs guys like if you have malaria you can think of right rbcs are getting lysed right so because of some infections there can be some lysis or there can be spherocytosis or they there can be this g6pd deficiency just look at this hemolytic anemia some autoimmune conditions some trauma some malaria some splenomegaly some spherocytosis some g6pd deficiency some enzymopathies all these can cause lysis of rbcs so you have finished the classification of anemia anemia classification you have finished but this is not the only type of 
classification of anemia there are a lot of types of classification of anemia there is another type of anemia where you can say that it is mild moderate uh, severe just remember severe anemia where it is less than 7 gram percentage then it is called a severe anemia everything else these values are varying uh, from book to book so just go with severe anemia less than 7 okay mild around 10 to 11 you can say then moderate 7 to 10 severe is less than 7 this much we, we can say is uh, common amongst some books okay then another type of anemia is there where you come by the shape of the rbc we'll come to that see when you check the hemoglobin of that person right the hemoglobin can be less than some value then you will know it's anemia but do you know what type of anemia and what the cause is no so again you have a type of uh, an, uh, you will uh, check the mean corpuscular volume guys mean corpuscular volume means is the volume of the rbc okay let me take a red here so the rbc volume see it could either be a small rbc okay or it could be a normal rbc or it could be a huge rbc when you do a peripheral smear right you will check this whether the rbc is small normal or big if it is small rbc you will say it is microcytic anemia if it is a normal rbc size you will say it is normocytic anemia and if it is a huge rbc you will see it's a macrocytic anemia this uh, will tell you what the cause of the anemia could be guys focus here uh, so if it is microcytic it can either be iron deficiency anemia or it can be thalassemia etc if it is normocytic it can either be some renal uh, cause or some bone marrow pathology right or the person is taking drugs or they have some g6pd deficiency or some some problem where there's hemolysis basically the rbc is fine you should understand that now coming to macro if it is macro then it can be either folic acid deficiency or vitamin b12 deficiency okay it can be folic acid deficiency or vitamin b12 deficiency so this is yet another classification of anemia anemia can be microcytic normocytic or macrocytic if it is microcytic usually it will be iron deficiency anemia or thalassemia it can be if it is normocytic right all the other causes if it is macrocytic remember it will be folic acid or vitamin b12 deficiency so this is yet another classification draw this uh, Uh, flow chart in the exam guys just as very simple okay just right here you will check the hemoglobin it is less than 9 they are saying here then you will check the mcv mcv is the mean corpuscular volume then you will decide whether it is microcytic normocytic or macrocytic okay if it is microcytic see normally what should be the volume of the rbc be around 90 femtoliter it should be okay around 90 you remember so here they have written less than 80 more than 94 so here they're saying if it is less than 80 guys focus uh, mcv is less than 80 that means microcytic so it can be you will check for iron iron is what serum iron you will check it will be less less iron serum iron will be less and serum ferritin that is the storage form that will also be less what and all will be less the serum iron and the serum ferritin both will be less okay this much you remember this will tell you that it is iron deficiency anemia in that case what you will give you will have to give that person iron whether you give it orally or whether you give it by a injection parenterally you can give the person iron finally if it is a to, uh, it's towards the term and uh, towards the later stages of pregnancy and there is severe anemia then they will do blood transfusion okay they are not giving iron they are giving blood itself okay this is in uh, iron deficiency anemia it can also happen that these people can have a microcytic picture but not have any iron problem that means there can be problem because of thalassemia so you will do hemoglobin electrophoresis okay and then you will find the hemoglobinopathies fine people we are looking at this uh, anemia uh, how to find out the cause kind of a thing okay then coming to uh, let's go to the macrocytic one macrocytic is easy let's finish it off so macrocytic means there will be big rbc and there you can see neutrophil will be hyper segmented so more than 5 and all if you see usually three uh, kind of segments you will see in the uh, nucleus cystis but this neutrophil if it is hyper segmented and if there is macrocytic anemia you can think about megaloblast uh, sorry what am i saying you can think about folic acid deficiency or vitamin b12 deficiency look at the levels of folate and uh, vitamin b12 guys if folate is less than 3 or vitamin b12 is less than 80 okay just remember nanogram picogram if you can remember 380 nanogram picogram if you can remember this value okay otherwise don't bother you will have to uh, give that person folic acid or vitamin b12 okay this vitamin b12 will contribute to the synthesis of hemoglobin by activating succinyl coa okay which is uh, required to make heme 
Just remember that how it works. How will folic acid help, guys? Actually, folic acid also is vitamin B only. But which vitamin is it? Folic acid? Vitamin B. B what number? It's vitamin B9. Okay, let's let's write that here. See, we have added this information here. It's vitamin B9. Basically, this folic acid, vitamin B12, and all what happens, right? So they have the DNA synthesis, the maturation of uh, nucleus and cytoplasm, right? All that requires this. So it's not just that if I'm not wrong, this doesn't affect only the RBCs. It affects all the cells in the body, isn't it? And um, here you're saying it is macrocytic anemia. What is megaloblastic anemia then? So megaloblastic anemia also they are using the same term. But if it is um, intrinsic factor deficiency, they are calling it as pernicious anemia, okay? This vitamin B12 deficiency you will see mostly in strict vegetarians, guys, and especially you, you need acid uh, for um, absorption of vitamin B12. So if people don't have do not have enough acid, right, that is they have an uh, achlorhydria, that is absence of HCl, then also they can have vitamin B12 deficiency. So guys, we are done with this uh, classification of anemia. We looked at so many types of classification. We looked at the etiological classification, then we looked at the severity classification, then we have looked at the Microcytic, normocytic, uh, and the macrocytic uh, anemia also we have looked at. Then we have to look at the concept of physiological anemia, guys. That is where the, uh, what happens is the plasma volume increases, okay. And um, the RBC volume also increases, okay. So what will happen, the amount of hemoglobin relatively seems lesser, but actually it is not less, okay? Hemoglobin is not less. It's just the volume has increased in of the plasma and the RBC. And also what happens, the iron demand in pregnancy increases, okay? So all this, it kinds of adds to um, a physiologic anemia, okay? So what is physiological anemia? The maternal plasma volume increases, the RBC volume also increases, okay? And there will be a relative fall in the hemoglobin and hematocrit. There is extra demand of iron during pregnancy. So this fall in hemoglobin concentration due to, uh, during pregnancy is a combined effect of hemodilution and the negative iron balance. So it is a combined effect of this increase in volume and the increase in uh, iron demand or the negative iron balance they are calling it as. Okay. So hemodilution will cause this physiological anemia of pregnancy. Okay. Look at this table here. If a person is not pregnant, if her hemoglobin is around 14.8, in second half of pregnancy, the hemoglobin is 11 to 14. So it's kind of reduced, you feel, but that is because of the volume increase. So you're calculating it as per deciliter, right? The volume has increased. That's it. Okay. So other values they have mentioned here. Anyways, we are done with physiolog concept of physiological anemia. Uh, let us just uh, look at a few things before we go to treatment. We have to go to treatment, okay? Yes, we have to go to treatment of all these anemias. Anyways, before that, we'll just take a small word on thalassemia because iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia both present as what? As microcytic uh, uh, anemia, right? So, microcytic anemia, microcytic hypochromic in terms of um, uh, uh, anemia, what are you calling it as? Microcytic hypochromic. That is a small RBC and a pale RBC, microcytic hypochromic anemia. Let me take a pale color. Yeah, this is a pale RBC, small RBC, pale RBC. So this can, this picture can be there both in iron deficiency and thalassemia. But how will you differentiate? Then you will have to check the mean corpuscular hemoglobin. Okay, that will be less than 27 picogram. Basically, um, hemoglobin you can see here, this is heme, right? All these are hemes and around it there is a globin chain. You will have to have two alpha and two beta, right? So here you have an alpha chain and an alpha chain. Here you have a beta chain and a beta chain. So you should have two alpha and two beta, right? Something like this you should have. But what happens in thalassemia, there is problem in the synthesis of this alpha and beta chain, right? So, so you can have either alpha thalassemia or beta thalassemia, okay? So when you do this high performance liquid chromatograph, you can greater than 3.5 HbA2. Then there is some MCV divided by RBC less than 13. Mint says Mincer index. Okay. So many things are there here, guys. So basically what we are trying to say is thalassemia can be alpha thalassemia or beta thalassemia. Basically, beta thalassemia major you should know. Right, that is an important condition for you to know here. There can be severe congenital hemolytic anemia and that person will need blood transfusion. Okay, beta thalassemia major. 
Finally, we have reached the treatment uh, of anemia in pregnancy, guys. Uh, so basically, if they ask you in the exam, you will be able to write a lot of things, right? Diagnosis, how will you do stool examination for hookworms you have to check, etc, etc. So basically, the first thing you want to do is deworm the patient. You will give mebendazole 100 mg tablet um, uh, twice daily for three days you can give. So that will be around uh, 600, is it? mg of uh, mebendazole, okay? They will first deworm the patient. Why? Because you saw that there could be worms. Right, then only once you eliminate this or any other cause, first you will eliminate the causes and then only you will come to the proper treatment. Right, now let us look at iron, uh, if there is iron deficiency anemia, how will you treat? So, in this case what will be there? Serum ferritin will be low, serum iron will be no, low, but total iron by ending capacity can be more. So, in normal pregnancy they will give 100 mg per day of uh, elemental iron, okay, of what if they say of elemental iron, okay, for normal pregnancy. If it is an anemia in pregnancy, they will give 200 mg per day of elemental iron. How will you calculate the requirement of iron? So, there is a formula for this. Guys, focus this formula you have also seen in uh, pharmacology, but this is slightly different here. They are saying it is 2.2 into weight in kgs into target hemoglobin minus patient hemoglobin. This target, you only will decide whether the target should be 14 or 13 or what you want the target to be based on that and the patient hemoglobin, right? And then you will add 1000 uh, mg for storage storage uh, for storage purposes you will add 1000 mg but if you do not add this 1000 mg for storage this you can instead of 2.2 you can make it 4.4 which is the formula you have actually studied in pharmacology see i have written here in pharmacology it is 4.4 they taught you right that is see this is the parventral uh, um, this is the iron requirement formula which you have studied in pharmacology basically 4.4 into body weight into hemoglobin deficit okay but here you are not adding the iron store. If you want to add iron stone as 1000, then this is the formula 2.2, 2.21 you can say into body weight in kg into hemoglobin deficit. Got it guys? Okay, so that clears the confusion. You can remember 2.2, okay. So here we are, we are looking at what guys? Treatment of anemia and pregnancy. So we have looked at the formula. Approximately, this will come to 200 gram if you are taking it as a mild case of um, uh, anemia. Okay, if it is a severe case, this value will increase. Okay, just remember, are approximately 200 mg per day. Okay, for a mild case of anemia, you can remember. What and all you will give that person if you want to give that person so much iron, you have decided this much iron you want to give that person. Focus, you want to give what? Give ferrous ascorbate. Okay, because it will not cause all those uh, uh, side effects of uh, uh, you know that nausea, that burpy, uh, metallic feeling. All that is not at all there with ferrous ascorbate. I have taken ferrous ascorbate. I love it. Anyways, I think the government is freely giving ferrous sulfate, which I don't like at all. Then there's something else. It's also called as carbonyl iron, which is also an io oral iron form. Okay. Parenteral, guys, if when will you give? Only if there is no compliance or there is no improvement, then you will stop the oral iron therapy and you will give what? Ferrous sucrose. Ferrous sucrose, you will give IV. This will have no anaphylaxis reaction. So, no need of test dose. And also, remember, you don't have to give IM because IM is painful, they are saying. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Otherwise, what are the options? You have iron, uh, ferrous sorbitol, which is IM, right? F then you have dextran. I think this is an old one. <coughs> Just look at the... Thing. You have studied all this in pharmacology. Remember, iron dextran is also called as IM ferron. You can give it IM or IV. Here, you have to use that Z track technique to give uh, if you are giving IM so that you don't stain the skin, right? But all this will have anaphylactic reaction. Remember, you have to give test dose. Then the other one is iron sorbitol, uh, jactofer. Again, this one is only IM. You should not give uh, other than IM, okay? Sorbitol. And then they are talking about. Uh, Ferrous sucrose, this is the one that is not going to cause um, anaphylactic reaction. It has less hypersensitivity, so no need of test dose. This you have to give IV. IM, they don't like z tract and all that you have to do and it's painful. This one is very good, right? You have to give IV. Okay, am I going too fast? Just to focus here. Ferrous sucrose is very nice. Sucrose is like sugar. Just remember like that. So sweet. So nice. Ferrous sucrose. Parenteral. Okay. Then the other things they are talking about is uh, this one, uh, sodium ferric gluconate, gluconate you can remember if you want, ferric carboxy maltose etc. So a lot of things guys, uh, combine your pharmacology knowledge with the uh, obstetric knowledge. Okay, so we are done with uh, giving um, uh, parenteral ion, very good. And the rate of rise of uh, 
I, uh, hemoglobin will be 1 gram for every 3 weeks. Whether you give I orally or parenterally, 1 gram it will rise for every 3 weeks. Now, let us say that woman is actually, you cannot wait so long and all 3 weeks and all. She has very, uh, she has severe, she has severe uh, anemia and she is also at the later stage of pregnancy. Then what they will do, they will give blood transfusion. You can give, better you give packed cells. That means only RBCs, like volume load will become less on that person, isn't it? So, you will not only give uh, iron, you are giving everything here, right? You are giving RPC, whole RPC you are giving here. So, you should know uh, what are the complications of uh, blood transfusion, all that you should know in that case, okay? And uh, uh, you should know if you give massive blood transfusion, what will happen? Massive blood transfusion may not be required, but that person will go into hypocalcemia, right? Because of the citrate which is there in the blood as a, as a preservative. Otherwise, these people, what problems they can have, some mismatch of the blood they can have, they can have febrile uh, allergic reactions they can have, all that you have studied in complications of blood transfusion, isn't it? So, they can also get some infections, right, because of the blood transfer. Then they can have uh, lung injury, they can have uh, heart failure, right, remember all that? Transfusion related acute lung injury. They can also go into disseminated intravascular coagulation if you do massive blood transfusion. Basically, what happens is this trolley and all you have seen, what exactly is the pathophysiology of lung failure? That is because um, the neutrophils uh, will uh, lodge in the pulmonary, uh, pulmonary what? Capillaries, right? There can be pulmonary edema, etc. So, you should write all this if you have time uh, about uh, blood transfusion, okay? What are the complications, all that you can write. Anyways, now let us go to management during labor. Don't worry people, we are at the absolute end of this video, okay? So basically, first stage of labor, what will you do? Uh, it, you will, uh, what is first stage of labor by the way? Dilatation of the cervix, right? So basically, uh, the following precautions you will take. The patient should be in bed, they should lie in a comfortable position, oxygen uh, inhalation. Wait, I'm sure all this you will write guys. The patient should be in bed, lying down comfortably, oxygen inhalation should be kept uh, arranged. You should arrange, they're not saying you should give. You should arrange for all oxygen, etc. Asepsis you will maintain so that she will not go into any infection. Now, coming to second stage, okay. Second stage, what will you do, guys? Focus here. Now, please, uh, second stage, again, asepsis you will maintain. Same thing they are talking about. Second stage is what? When the baby moves down through the vagina and it is born, right? The birth of the baby happens in the second stage, right? So, what will you do here? So, you want to reduce the duration. Okay, you don't want her to go into prolonged labor. So, you want to shorten the duration. So, they are ready to use forceps or vacuum delivery. Okay, and intravenous methargin 0.2 mg should be given. Why will you give methargin? What will it do guys? Methargin. Methargin. Basically, you want the uterus to contract, right? So, that is why they are giving that. Soon following the delivery of the baby. So, you want her the, to reduce postpartum hemorrhage looks like. Methargin, okay. So, soon after the delivery of the baby, you will have to give IV methargin 0.2 mg, okay. Are you ready to go to the third stage, guys? Third stage is what? Delivery of the placenta, is it? So, you should be very vigilant during this time. Significant of blood loss should be replenished by fresh packed transfusion. So, you may need to do a blood transfusion. You should be ready for that. You don't only keep oxygen ready, you should also keep the blood, you know, fresh packed cell transfusion, you should keep everything ready for that, right? And you should take precautions because blood transfusion can cause problems. You should know all this. Postpartum overload on the heart should be avoided. Remember, we told you when the uterus contracts and the blood, more blood goes to the heart, the, there can be cardiac failure. So, you should be very careful about that also. That's why they're talking about packed cell infusion. They, they are not talking about whole blood here, right? Very important word here. You don't just do blood transfusion. You should tell packed cell transfusion, right? Now, let us look at what happens in puerperium. Guys, focus here. Puerperium, basically, again, antibiotics you will give that person so that they don't go into infection. Very good. Then you will do pre-delivery anti-anemic therapy. Pre-delivery anti-anemic therapy, whatever you were doing before, now you should continue it. Okay, You should continue this anemia treatment to restore all her uh, uh, clinical and hematological states. Right? Iron therapy should be continued for at least three months after following the delivery you will give her iron so that is easy what will you do in uh, after the delivery guys you will make sure that uh, she doesn't go into infection you will continue the iron therapy you will uh, you will uh, give her antibiotics then you should be you should warn her of the recurrence 
in subsequent pregnancies so you should tell her that don't get pregnant very quickly again etc in subsequent pregnancies you may have same problem so you may want to go into whatever uh, if she has like thalassemia or any other kind of condition she should plan accordingly right okay so we are done with management during labor what is the last slide here that was all about iron iron and macrocytic anemia uh, they are telling if you have that is folic acid and vitamin b12 deficiency you can give folic acid 5 mg per day vitamin b12 you can give cyanocobalamin injection okay actually in uh, psm right in uh, maternal mortality ratio that is in community medicine what did we learn about folic acid till folic acid we learned that you should give 500 microgram right iron 60 milligram but actually they are saying you can just make it as 100 okay 100 milligram you can remember and uh, 500 microgram is enough that is nothing but 0 0.5 0 0.5 milligram this is for normal okay this is for normal pregnancies but if there is deficiency if there is deficiency what they are talking about 200 milligram iron per day and actually we are talking about 5 milligram folic acid per day and they are talking about injection INJ cyano cobalamin okay so this is something you have to remember 0 0.5 milligram folic acid per day normal but if there is deficiency they are going up to 5 milligram folic acid and folic acid you should give even before the pregnancy starts because it otherwise it can lead to neural, neural tube defects right normally they are talking about for normal pregnancy they are talking about 0 0.5 milligram per day actually okay but if it is anemia they are going up to 5 milligram per day is it look at the textbook here guys they are talking about um, prophylactic uh, let's say 500 microgram of folic acid and curative they are talking about 5 milligram you can say orally right daily administration that, that's what i'm telling you if it is normal you can say 500 um, microgram of folic acid and if it is uh, anemic anemia you can talk about 5 milligram okay so 500 microgram for normal that is 0.5 milligram but if there is deficiency 5 milligram okay then before we close this video guys just look at two more terminologies dimorphic anemia and aplastic anemia dimorphic anemia means if that person has both iron deficiency and uh, vitamin b12 deficiency okay so let us say dimorphic anemia means that person will have iron deficiency and they can have folic acid or vitamin b12 deficiency so in this case what will happen they will actually have big rbc or they'll have normal rbc they won't have microcytic they are saying they'll have either normocytic and macrocytic or they can have hypochromic and or normochromic okay so this is a kind of a dimorphic picture they are not talking about microcytic remember so it will be either macrocytic or normocytic hypochromic or normochromic normal normal color or normal normal size of uh, the uh, rbc along with some big rbcs or hypochromic rbcs okay so this is going to be dimorphic anemia then coming to aplastic anemia is where you blame the bone marrow right this is rarely seen in uh, pregnancy okay decrease in the marrow stem cells stem cells itself are less this is aplastic anemia take a recap in this video we looked at anemia in pregnancy uh, basically we looked at what anemia is hemoglobin less than 11 gram percentage uh, then uh, what are the complications of anemia why is it such an important topic because in pregnancy it can lead to preeclampsia infection heart failure preterm labor in labor it can lead to short uh, baby small baby uh, etc postpartum hemorrhage cardiac failure shock it can lead to then you saw that in puerperium it can lead to sepsis sub involution poor lactation can be there because of anemia then uh, there can be venous thrombosis pulmonary embolism the risk periods of sudden death are uh, uh, 30 to 32 weeks of pregnancy during labor the patient may die during immediately after delivery the patient may die even during pure perium seven to ten days after delivery the patient can die the baby as such will not have anemia but it can have low birth weight and even intrauterine death of the baby can be caused because of the anoxemia okay 
classification of pregnancy you saw that can be physiological anemia of pregnancy where there is hemodilution and negative iron balance so because of uh, uh, increased plasma volume of the mother and uh, increased rbc volume there is a relative fall in the hemoglobin right also the demand during uh, in, in pregnancy uh, for iron is more right then coming to pathological causes you saw hemorrhagic like could be acute or chronic like uh, because of hookworm infestations or bleeding of piles etc there can be deficiency anemia iron deficiency folic acid uh, that is vitamin b9 deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency intrinsic factor deficiency protein deficiency especially in strict vegetarians vitamin b12 deficiency guys then coming to uh, dimorphic anemia where you saw that the person can have uh, deficiency of both iron and uh, folic or vitamin b12 deficiency then coming to hereditary causes you saw thalassemia sickle cell hemoglobinopathy extra bone marrow insufficiency leading to hypoplasia or aplasia causing aplastic anemia some drug intake like aspirin indomethacin can cause uh, anemia chronic diseases uh, of uh, the uh, kidney then any uh, neoplasm that these people have uh, there could be some leukemias lymphomas etc there could be increased destruction of rbcs like in malaria the person could have uh, spherocytosis g6pd deficiency etc some infections like tuberculosis kala azar can cause um, anemia guys uh, then there can be uh, what else uh, uh, other types of classification of anemia you saw where there is uh, severe anemia less than 7 gram percentage right and uh, you saw that there is another type of anemia uh, classification where you are classifying it as microcytic normocytic or macrocytic microcytic usually will be because of iron or thalassemia macrocytic will be because of uh, folic acid or vitamin b12 deficiency all the others will cause normocytic anemia right like drug intake bone marrow pathology kidney problem autoimmune diseases hemolysis etc then coming to uh, this one concept of physiological anemia you saw where uh, the we told you that the hemoglobin level uh, will reduce see here normal pregnancy is around 14.8 uh, non pregnant but second half of pregnancy the uh, hemoglobin value has reduced okay because the volume has increased and hemoglobin you are always saying is a deciliter right 11 gram per deciliter so the volume itself has increased the denominator has increased then we'll have a, had a look at thalassemia where you saw that it is also having a microcytic hypochromic uh, anemia picture but here the mch will be less and you can see some uh, problem in the alpha chain beta chain etc so cause uh, there can be alpha thalassemia or beta thalassemia Vitamin B12 deficiency in strict vegetarians or uh, these people can have uh, intrinsic, intrinsic factor deficiency or uh, they can have HCL being absent in their stomach secretions. Then you, uh, we looked at uh, treatment of anemia in pregnancy. Basically, you will have to deworm the patient, mebendazole, all the investigations you have to write. Okay, uh, Stool examination would be required to uh, uh, rule out this uh, hookworm infestation, guys. Mebendazole is for the deworming. Then you will give ion therapy if there is iron deficiency. So normal pregnancy anyways they will give to all women iron that is 100 uh, uh, milligram per day. Actual requirement is 60 milligram per day. Okay, They are giving 100. If there is anemia they are giving 200. The formula is 2.2 into weight Okay, into uh, the target hemoglobin minus the patient hemoglobin plus 1000 you will give for uh, storage. Guys uh, and then uh, this will come approximately to this value 200 mg per day of elemental iron for anemia in pregnancy okay if you don't want to add this thousand uh, uh, for storage then you can just take the formula as 4.4 into weight into uh, 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 the hemoglobin deficit so 4.4 is what you have read in pharmacology don't get confused that one does not have the iron stores in consideration then you can give oral iron you can give ferrous ascorbate which will not cause all those uh, uh, symptoms and they actually start this in the second trimester only isn't it then parenteral uh, ferrous uh, sucrose is preferred IV. It doesn't have anaphylaxis, no need of test dose. And uh, parenteral you will give only if oral compliance is poor or there is no improvement, right? So then the raise of uh, hemoglobin will be 1 gram for around uh, 3 weeks of uh, this treatment. Blood transmission they will give only if there is severe anemia in the later stages of pregnancy. They will give packed cells uh, that is, um, you know, uh, the volume overload will be less, okay? Packed red cells is nice, right? Then um, uh, if there is um, folic acid deficiency, normal pregnancy anyways they are giving 500 microgram of uh, folic acid per day. But if it is the anemic picture, they are ready to give around 4 uh, milligram per day or 5 milligram per day. Okay. 
फोर टू फाइव मिलीग्राम पर डे दे आर रेडी टू गिव फॉर अनिमिक पिक्चर इफ इट इज विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व दे आर गिविंग इंजेक्शन साइन ऑफ कोबॉल अमीन ओके Yes, last slide, guys. So basically, uh, how will you manage during labor? First stage, basically, you will make the patient comfortable, etc. You will uh, keep oxygen ready, and you will keep an aseptic environment so that she does not catch any infection. Then, in second stage of labor, that is when the uh, first stage was only dilation of the cervix. Then, second stage when the baby is actually delivered, there also you will maintain uh, asepsis. You will keep the uh, stage of labor short. You can you are ready to use forceps or vacuum delivery. You will give after the delivery, you will give IV methargin 0.2 mg for the contraction of the uterus. third stage what you will do that is delivery of placenta uh if there is a significant blood loss then only you will give uh, packed cell transfusion but you should be careful that the heart does not get overloaded then in pure perium you will always give antibiotics to prevent uh, infection then you will give her uh, continue the anemia therapy and then you will tell her that uh, be careful about subsequent uh, pregnancies okay so that covers this topic anemia and pregnancy very important in obstetrics bye bye